Today I'm going to talk about these two RTX 4080 graphics cards from Gigabyte, the Aorus Master, which is their high-end air-cooled model that comes with some interesting extra features, and the Gigabyte Gaming OC, which is supposed to be a more affordable and a little bit more modest model of the two. So I'm going to talk about how these two cards perform and how do they compare to the Founders Edition from Nvidia, as well as the ROG Strix and the tough gaming cards from ASUS that I reviewed in my last two videos. So let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high-quality power supplies are extremely efficient, they are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load, they offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, and you even get the new 12 volt high power connection you need for the brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from Nvidia. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there, and as a nice bonus, you get a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Just like Nvidia and Asus, Gigabyte decided to use the same cooling solution they had on their RTX 4090s. And both of these cards are absolutely massive. The Gaming OC is 34 centimeters long, 15 centimeters deep, and seven and a half centimeters wide. It weighs about two kilos and to keep it straight and prevent sagging, but also to take a bit of the pressure off the PCIe slot, Gigabyte included this two-piece bracket. So one part goes on the graphics card, the other one on the motherboard, and you secure them together, which is pretty clever, in my opinion, because it holds it tightly in several points, and it is a perfect solution if you want to move your whole system around, because the card won't move at all. Design-wise, it is a pretty good-looking card. Uh, the gray color scheme is easy to mix and match with other hardware, uh, no matter the brand, and they have this interesting RGB effect behind the fans. Unfortunately, the RGB is only on if the fans are spinning, so if your PC is idle or you're busy with some very light tasks, you won't see it at all because this card does have the fan stop feature that keeps it nice and quiet when you're not gaming. The Aorus Master takes the same concept one step further. It is the largest card I reviewed so far. It is 36 centimeters long, more than 16 centimeters wide, and again, about seven and a half centimeters deep. It weighs almost two and a half kilos, and it even makes the ROG Strix look reasonable in comparison. Needless to say, you definitely want to use the included GPU holder with this card. Now, I do like that the power connector is pulled in, so the space you need for this card isn't that different than on most other models, although you should definitely still measure your current case or just check its specs to make sure this card will fit. Unlike the Gaming OC, the Aorus Master has LEDs on the actual fans, uh, just like they did with the 2000 series Extreme cards, and this gives it an even brighter and, in my opinion, an even better look. You still lose the effect when the fan stops, but I do think that this is a design that works really well if you mount your card vertically. The Master also has a little display on the side of the card, which you can use to show some data, like a GPU temperature, for example, but you can also show your own text or different animations instead, which can look really cool, in my opinion. But keep in mind that it will be very hard to show the display and the RGB fans at the same time, because if you go for a vertical mount, for example, to show off the fans, you won't really see the display in most cases, and vice versa. Aside from the design and RGB, these two cards are pretty similar in other aspects. They both use the same 16-pin 12-volt high power connector, they both have a dual BIOS feature, and they both have three DisplayPort 1.4 connections and one HDMI 2.1 connection on the back. I do think it's a bit of a shame that Master doesn't come with an extra HDMI port, so if you need an extra HDMI, you will have to go for an ASUS card, for example. When it comes to the 4080 chip itself, uh, it is a significant upgrade compared to its predecessor, the RTX 3080. It is about 31% faster at 1080p and about 42% faster on Quad HD as well as 4K resolution. That also puts it well ahead of the RX 6900 XT. Here, the 4080 is about 32% ahead at 1440p and about 39% at 4K resolution. But the RTX 
4090 chip is ahead of the RTX 4080 by another 20% on Quad HD and 34% on 4K, which is a big difference and might be an issue for higher end 4080s that cost a lot over the already high MSRP. Still, the 4080 is an impressive chip, offering good performance for high refresh rate 1440p and 4K monitors, and it does that while pulling around 300 watts instead of the 425 to 450 watts that most RTX 4090s pull. Now, before we look at how these two cards perform and how do they compare to other 4080s I've tested so far, uh, there is one thing that I need to talk about. Uh, the behavior of the silent BIOS on both of these cards was very odd, in my opinion. On the gaming OC card, the silent BIOS was extremely similar to the default OC BIOS, which makes it pretty much pointless. But on the Aorus MasterCard, the silent BIOS was just really erratic, in my opinion. So it would spin up the fans when the GPU starts working, like you would expect it to do, uh, which would then cool down the car to the point where it would stop the fans again. So as soon as the temps get to about 59-ish degrees, the fans would spin up to 1400 RPM, and then very quickly they would turn off. And then the car gets warmer, then they go on again, and then they go off again. And it was all happening all the time. So on and off, on and off, which is then even more noticeable than if they were constantly spinning because we are more susceptible to changes in volume than to a constant hum. And as you can see here, every time they would spin up or down again, they often spike a little bit higher, which is then even more noticeable. If your case isn't cooled that well, you will probably never experience this because it would keep the card warmer and stay above the fan stop threshold, but a properly cooled case can definitely have an issue with this. So I really do think they need to rethink their fan control because uh, this hard line barrier between the fans being off and going to about 1400 RPM is far from what I would call silent. Uh, thankfully, this can be fixed with a simple firmware or software update, and I think that Gigabyte should look into it ASAP. But before they do, you can always make your own custom fan profile, and that is what I did here. So in the graphs, the lighter shade is the default factory OC BIOS, and the darker shade for these Gigabyte cards is the second BIOS, uh, but then with my own actually silent fan curve instead, so keep that in mind. The clock speeds are slightly up compared to the Founders Edition, and the Master is slightly faster than the Gaming OC, but most of these differences are pretty much insignificant. Memory clocks, just like on the 4090s, remain unchanged between all of these cards, and these slightly higher boost clocks do lead to slightly higher frame rates, with both Gigabyte cards just outperforming the Founders Edition, but keep in mind, these differences are very small. In Spider-Man Remastered, there is only a 1-2% to of a difference in average FPS between each of these cards, and it's the same in God of War, where 1-3 to FPS more or less will not really impact your actual gaming experience. Dirt 5 shows pretty much the same thing, so generally speaking, the difference in game performance is just a tiny little bonus, and it should never be the reason to go for the more expensive models. Now, if we look at the power consumption, uh, both Gigabyte cards use about 20 watts more than the Founders Edition, but even if we look at the ROG card, you can see that pulling even more power doesn't really help when it comes to gaming performance. It is interesting to see, though, that the Master is slightly below the gaming OC, so that small display doesn't make much of a difference either. More power also leads to more heat, but these oversized 4090 coolers have no problem dealing with it. Out of the box, in their default BIOS, the gaming OC hits only 56-ish degrees on the GPU cores, which is not much at all, and the master sits closer to 54 degrees. And those silent fan curve temperatures are excellent as well. The hotspot and memory temperatures show a similar picture, so Gigabyte isn't ignoring memory cooling to try to reach even lower core temps. Looking at the noise levels, Gigabyte is clearly choosing lower temps over a quieter card. Now, the Gigabyte Gaming OC is still pretty reasonable out of the box, as 41.4 decibels is 
quite okay for a high-end card, but it is noticeably more audible than the Tough Gaming and the Founders Edition, and definitely much louder compared to the Whisper Quiet ROG Strix. But the Aorus Master takes it to the extreme level, hitting almost 44 decibels, which is straight up super noisy. And I don't really get why Gigabyte is doing this. Uh, the temperatures on this card are so low that you can easily make it quieter while still having excellent results. And I think that this summary shows it perfectly because with the fans tuned down to only 38 decibels at 50 centimeters distance, you still get fantastic thermals. And if I compare this data to the ROG card, it shows that the master performs very similar to it, which is a great result. The Gaming OC looks completely fine to me. Uh, in default profile, it is a little bit louder, but the temps are great. And you can also choose to run it super quiet without any issues as well. When you compare it to the ASUS Tough Guard and look at the two quiet profiles side by side, the Gaming OC is actually significantly cooler in every metric at a similar noise level, even if it uses a tiny bit more power. Especially when you see what these cards will cost you, because this is where it gets very complicated. And not just for these two cards from Gigabyte, but for all 4080s that have launched since. The RTX 4080 MSRP is already way higher than it is supposed to be, but that doesn't really compare to what you have to spend for it in an actual shop. So if you're in a hurry to buy a new card and you really need one uh, right now, I'm not going to blame anyone for grabbing a 4080, especially with the 4090s being almost impossible to find and then often extremely overpriced. But if you're not in a hurry to buy a new card right now, it is definitely worth waiting a bit to see uh, how the next few weeks will play out, especially with AMD launching their new GPUs in December that will hopefully nicely compete with this 4080 and hopefully influence this whole situation a little bit. Uh, and then especially so if what they promise ends up being true performance-wise, price-wise and stock-wise. So that is all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to click that subscribe button because I have a few more 4080s to go over in the next few days. Bye guys and see you in the next one.